Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Out of System. Max, Joe, how we doing? Doing great. We're doing back. Good man. Another fantastic nice and weekend. Serene on this show as always. I'd like to kind of start off this show with uh, two shout outs. First shout out with my dad for outfitting me. He got mad that I didn't tell him that these are my dad's sweaters and my dad's beanie. He has no idea that I have this, so he's probably pretty pissed at that. So I'll get it when he, when he watches this episode. And two, the fans out there. Thank you. We're over a thousand subscribers now. I uh, I didn't see that coming. I'm be honest. I, you guys want to like a month this. and a half of work doing. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I mean, I didn't know you guys wanted to hear. And to us. be honest, it's really like a month of hard work because the first month it was, we were just Zoom calling things like it was a mess. So <laughs> we were doing stuff from a bathtub. <laughs> they could lose out on a lot of those contracts and a lot of money coming. Um, <laughs> I was filming shows from a bathtub. Max, do you remember our first? We were talking about whatever our. I think Huddle episode three, we talked about Dick Pound. <laughs> and, uh, That's the guy's name. Yeah. Bend over. Was- Legendary IOC member. Dick Pound. Great name. <laughs> was announced by legendary Canadian Dick Pound. Send Dick Pound out to answer this. To- Dick Pound and Benjamin Dover. I, just, I, I went through all our videos the other day and I was watching them and I was laughing my butt off at all yeah. how idiotic we were. Also, from our fans, you know, since we've opened up our email, we've opened up our social media, we've gotten a lot of feedback, but we've also gotten a lot of cool stories uh, and stuff coming in from our fan base. And literally, we've had people from all of it. We just received a message yesterday from somebody from Brazil to send in their love and giving us some feedback. Prestige worldwide. Prestige worldwide. (laughs) We uh, and then we had actually a really cool email we got last week. I shared with the boys. From uh, individual, her, Insta- her I'm not gonna give her full name, but she goes by Raylan. It's her Instagram name, and basically she had emailed us to tell to tell us that she had gone through the past year or two. She's gone past uh, a difficult time uh, in her volleyball career because she she was she didn't love it. She didn't like her team. Her team wasn't being too nice to her. And then this whole quarantine started, and she got kind of hooked on uh, our YouTube page. She's been listening. In. She said ever since then she is more excited than ever to get back on the volleyball court. So that's the kind of stuff we like to hear. That that's is nice so cool. to hear. And we love hearing that. So please email us at outofsystem808 at gmail.com. Um, you know, I also was going through some of our followers. Jackie Mati, one of our followers, I, 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 don't, I randomly clicked on her account one day, and she has a personal account, and then she has a volleyball account. I'm like, none of us are even cool enough to be able to have a volleyball account. <laughs> I, was, oh I was impressed by that. I'm like, she has her own volleyball account. Respect. That is impressive. That respect. Um, so. Well, fans out there, again, we are, we are staying tuned. So any great stories, we're staying tuned to what you guys have to say. So just let us know. Let us know what's up. You know how it be, baby. Come on now. Okay. So before we go into our first segment of Chalkity Talkity, we're going to address two things now. Well, personally, me. So we released a TikTok, highly controversial. E.T. covered it uh, a bunch of Times Magazine, uh, Dancer of the Year, Gage Boys. Times. <laughs> Plural, not not the New York Times and not Time Magazine. Times Magazine, <laughs> multiple Times Magazine. So, so I was. There were a lot of comments about my my underwear or lack of underwear. You had underwear on. I had I underwear. Hope. Okay. I, I, well, first of all, we warned you. We warned you a week ago about hey, you got to watch out for me. All of a sudden, stuff starts flying. You got to be ready for me. You got to. You're a little too proud of that. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not to be proud of it. Yeah, why would I be ashamed of it? It's like, you know what? I'm out there. I'm living life. And I've since worn tighter underwear. So for the TikTok videos, I will be wearing tighter underwear for our fans out there. Put those Star Wars briefs back on. Uh, our second thing that I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, I have found them. Yes, I have. Peanut butter lovers. I found them. Reese, all right, Joe found, all right, funny story. 
I ordered a 32 pack online. I finally found it because someone DM me I'm like, Hey, try out Walmart. So I go in Walmart, by the way, Reese's is definitely not sponsoring this video. Even if they would, uh, we wouldn't be able to accept it. So, <laughs> uh, I wore my shirt for, for some love out there. Um, but I ordered a 32 pack online and then they were coming and then 30 minutes later, Joe finds these at the local Safeway. So we're gonna uh, here. the first, first ever Reese's peanut butter lovers here. Can I give you a open up this pack? We're going to try this ASMR style. Okay, guys. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, oh, right there. We're just gonna, we're just gonna try some peanut butter lovers right here. Listen to the sound of the pack. Listen. Listen. Wow. It's a nice shell right there. Oh, right there. <laughs> Shoot it louder. <laughs> oh, not like. Oh my. I hate you. <laughs> Max Housen. Bite it. Oh my. So, mm. <laughs> really actually, good. All right, for the review, it's actually not bad. It's a nice peanut butter flavor. It'll be a little too much peanut butter, but I kind of like it. Oh, that's good. I'm enjoying these and the 32 pack that's going to come to my house <laughs> next Tuesday. So, guys. It's just going to be a big man. And <laughs> the second thing we have coming to you guys after this, <laughs> this past week, the, the annual college recruiting rankings were released and those are voted on by the college coaches across the country and all division one, division two, I'm pretty sure all, maybe it's just the committee. Uh, but I'm going to assume that it's all coaches submit a form ranking the uh, incoming recruiting classes, um, based on their, uh, previous year. Dude. All right. So this is our chalk talk for the week. Chalk talk. Chalk talk. Talk We're going to talk talk-ity. about the lack of respect the University of Hawaii gets. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a huge volleyball rankings. I, I'm, I'm a big, okay. Tell me where you start. It's where you finish. But I mean, come on. I mean, Hawaii has been screwed over so many times, whether it's in the NCAA tournament or it's in the college volleyball rankings. It doesn't matter. UH finished. The, so so they, did a, they do a report every year, the college ranking, who has the best class coming in. This year, they put us at nine. nine okay. Yeah. I After am not being saying, eight last year. Exactly, exactly. Eight. I am not saying that we're the greatest class of all time. I'm not saying, hey, we should be number one. A couple times I think we should have been number one. But what I'm saying is, put some respect on my name. <laughs> put some respect on my name. <laughs> Don't play with my name. Put some respect on my name. Okay? <laughs> because because I hear all these like like last year. Let's talk about last year, right? We were eight, and I'm like, all the people above us, we had all, like, we had like three freshmen, like, co- like continuously starting or contributing yep. very, very big. And I'm like, like, they did way better than any other freshman. Name another freshman that did that well. I'm just like, yeah, yeah I mean, they're what, some good freshmen. Playing, de- playing devil's advocate, you have to be able to understand, though, that the international kids, which Hawaii has a tendency to recruit a lot of, and a lot of their big recruits and a lot of their money gets dumped into the international kids. It's hard for coaches to sit there and evaluate those kids because they, they don't go see them every weekend in Anaheim or at all these qualification tournaments. And so if a big kid is coming in outside of the country, I mean, you have to cut some coaches some, some slack because for the most part, most, co- most coaches don't even know who these kids are coming in. I mean, that, I mean that, but the top coaches do because they're probably recruiting the same people. And in Long Beach, I know their best recruits, uh, they have a German kid and they have a bunch of other really, really good U.S. recruits. Um, but I'm saying like after a bunch of time, you should be like, okay, the guys that bring in are probably good. Just kind of throw us a bone or something like that. So I just kind of read that. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like I see, and, and I'm not trying to dish on any of the incoming freshmen or the freshmen of last year. I'm just saying like, it's just facts. It's just stats. You can see who's doing the best. And it's continuous that Hawaii is doing the best. Yeah. Well, the voting also, University of Hawaii does a really good job with developing their players. And so you see programs that might have high, uh, might get really good ratings in the recruiting classes before the kids even come in. But then there's kids who don't even develop. And so Dude. the recruiting rankings to me never have, been, <laughs> have shown any value because I see, I see teams get high rankings who are never even really relevant for them to be the top team in the country. Yeah, that's true. You scout, that's the thing. I mean, Max, you know, I mean, I mean, heck, I'm not trying to dish on you or anything, but were you even, you probably weren't even ranked, weren't even looked at coming in. And then look at you now, you're on the top team, getting starting time, blocking the top middles in the nation. Huh. Max, put some respect in this Appreciate name. it. Appreciate that's it. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, so, I, I feel like it's just, a, it can be just a talking point for people a lot of times, this stuff. You know what I mean? It's just some, we're in a complete absence period of news. For collegiate volleyball, it's just one th- extra thing to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And and for sure, like the recruiting process, I think, I think part of what I was getting into and alluding to with 
the the kids coming in and not developing or not having uh, any progress in their college career and the and the program's not benefiting from it is because these kids step into programs that have had such a great history in the past couple of years and they've been the top team and they expect that they just kind of wear the they wear that same sort of level of pride um, and almost like ego uh, as everybody else and there's seniors who just graduated or there's people who just uh, uh, came, came in to be uh, upperclassmen. And those guys have worked so hard to change the culture, to improve their skills, and uh, just overall make, get the program to where it is. And these freshmen come in and just kind of have this. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that every program's like this and every kid's like this. I'm just saying, in general, the reason why this happens is because these kids step in and just kind of uh, almost feel like they, it, it, they, they don't need to earn anything and they just walk in and are already at the same, same level as everybody else. And so I think that's uh, a big reason why you see kind of the drop off with some kids when they hit, hit the college uh, collegiate scene. Yeah, for sure. Okay, guys. Well, NCAA, if you're listening, and the coaches, if you're listening, you heard us. It's not the NCAA. It was ABCA. ABCA, if you're listening. <laughs> you heard us loud and proud. All right. Okay, guys. We're going to get to our guest here. Kalei Mount, the Filipino Hawaiian hammer. And uh. another multi-platinum recording artist Ooh. awarded by this show ourselves out of system. <laughs> out of Four system, letters. multi-platinum artist, Kalei Mao. Kalei Mao, how's it? That's the first thing I, I just, <laughs> they, they dare me to do that. They pre impressioned me to do that. So, like, All right, fine. Yeah. Do it. so a little, a little backstory for, uh, for Clay Mao here. You are born in Hawaii, Filipino, went to the Filipino national team, played in the Philippines, France, and Puerto Rico. Am I right? Am I? Ding, ding. Yes, correct. Cool. Yeah. And attending the University of Arizona, I, I've, I've kind of noticed that a lot of uh, Hawaiians go to the University of Arizona, especially for volleyball. From your perspective, why would you say that is? Uh, well, I think there wasn't a ton of Hawaiians that went before me. But after, since I was able to open that door, uh, I, t I played with a lot of younger girls when I would go back home from college just to train. Uh, with some old clubs back in, in Honolulu. And so, of course, I, I would spark out some really good athletes that and you know it's exposure in Hawaii is very is, is really hard to get so of course taking names from the island and putting it out on the mainland uh, I'm just happy that my coaching staff at Arizona loved me enough to give another Hawaiian a chance so Kalei Mao self-proclaimed revolutionary player I love it I'm all about it <laughs> <laughs> no but, but that's true I mean you see the community in Hawaii and you see how close everything is like they see mm -hmm. one player and they're like okay like and you guys are so tight-knit which kind of goes into my next question here like I'm sure you had rivals uh you played at St am I right St. Francis in uh, in high school was it oh uh, yeah I did St. Francis in high school I mean you probably had friends but also like rivals that you went to that ended up playing the Pac-12 or did you kind of carry over that rivalry in the, in the Pac-12 or was it like, okay, I see another Hawaiian over there. I'm going to come at you. Or was it just kind of friendly? Actually, um, my high school volleyball career didn't really last very long. I was more of a soccer player back in high school. Um, so I would only do high school soccer and then um, I was doing club volleyball. So, uh, which actually allowed me to grow a uh, stronger relationships instead of the rivalry between high schools. Uh, Hawaii is a little bit different when it comes to that. The club volleyball scene is a lot bigger. And so being on the team, being on like one correlated team with a bunch of girls from different schools is uh, even better. So when we go over and we play each other either in the Pac-12 or the tournament, it's like, wow, that's my sister. Like that, you know, uh, yeah. it, feels, it feels good. That's really right. cool. I saw that. Uh, I was watching a video, and I, and I saw that your dad wanted you to play soccer, but you were like, well, "Am I right? Mm -hmm. your, it was your dad, and you're like, uh, either I'm doing this or I'm driving driving myself to uh <laughs> to practice over here for volleyball. Like I'll literally drive myself. How how old were you when you said that? Yeah, I was 15 when I when I decided. <laughs> so wow. I mean, winners find a way is what we say. That, that that's kind of the big phrase on the show. Um, mm -hmm. I respect that. So. A little another some other uh, uh, some background information was that you played in the Philippines right in in Filipino national team um, for about mm -hmm. two years but recently something happened where now that that kind of that kind of rolls over for you so can you kind of go into that what, sure. what happened with that or yeah well actually if it was two years I would have been able to play in the the Asian Sea Games but because I've only been playing here for now a year and a half 
um, I, I wasn't actually a ton of uh, the other countries, Southeast Asian countries actually had a protest against me for not having the res residency. Um, and then like, it, it was really small fine print um, problems that was that, you know, like grew because I have my passport. My mom was born here. Um, and so I just, it's because I was new to the volleyball scene here in Southeast Asia that they were like, wait, that's not fair. Like you can't have this girl that just can't, you know, like, and then come over here and I don't know, it was just really bad. And it was another Hawaiian Filipino girl with me um, that w had some problems also. So it's just a, a matter of time and we just have to get the residency first and foremost that we have to be here and play here for two years uh the minimum and then and then we can be uh national team members again right on and so i i was gage and i were talking this morning actually and we we know a little bit about the filipino league but not as much as we know about some of the european leagues and sure. so we, we checked out some videos some of your matches and it looks like crazy there like i saw like yeah. five, shot off the cr the crowds it was packed houses what is it like playing there compared to here in the u.s or then also over in europe since you played in france uh, well, I mean, if you guys have ever been to Asia, it's like literally like a Latin. It, I mean, here in the Philippines, there is so much passion for sports and for musicians. So it's just a craze. If you've ever gone to Japan, if you've ever gone to Korea or China, you're just going to see like if there's somebody performing or somebody there to play, you're going to see a bunch of people just crowding into one place because it's like, it's such a big deal here. And so, um, and I think, I, Joe, I've talked to you about this before. Like I, the, most, the most important thing for me is just to get the experience all over. Um, and so when I had this opportunity to come play in the Philippines, I'm not like, I don't claim myself as a Filipino. I'm Hawaiian, I'm native Hawaiian. I'm born and raised Hawaii, like all the way. But I had this opportunity come reach out to me after my shoulder surgery. And I pretty much had nowhere else to go. And I thought my life is gonna be done with volleyball. I have to move on. Um, Philippines just came up out of nowhere. And I said, okay, why not? I didn't wanna go down like that anyways with a dislocated shoulder and that's the end. So I came out here, I played my first three games and I thought, uh, like, I, I think, I fell in love with volleyball again because to see the people and how much you impact that really the, the people that come to watch our games have nothing. And so the way that you can uh, produce so many smiles, so much love in once and by just doing something you enjoy, it's addicting. So that's why I ended up staying here. So, so Max and I still play at university of Hawaii and occasionally, not occasionally, pretty often we get a lot of Filipino uh, fans coming from the Philippines. And, and this year, especially yeah. we played our last, our last game was against BYU. And there was, I, was, I distinctly remember this group and I'll tell you why after, after the story here, but I remember that, I mean, Max, you know, they literally would came and we had autograph session afterwards and they came through the lines like two or three times and they were like the happiest, like go lucky oh, yeah, kind sure. of people. Like as they saw yeah. us, they were just like so loving. And the Hawaiian people are all also, but like they were just like super energized and it's infectious. And then and then we later, uh, um, and then we later get interviewed by uh, what was it? What was the news network? Sun SMNI Sunshine News. Are you familiar with that news company? No. It's a no. They, they uh they got a hold of my brother and I about our show and they're like we go we broadcast on uh Filipino like national television we're like all right <laughs> we'll do it and, 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 and so best, we did an interview for him a couple of weeks ago <laughs> and and the best part about it was is that before the interview we like all those fans that were at the game it, it was them mm -hmm. it was they're like they're they're I forget I don't know how they were related. Like company some yeah company. exactly they all like appeared in the screen and like hey, hey how you do it and I think when we watched your games we saw that it was just like a total just like community with yeah. the and with the fans and i think i think that's mm -hmm. the part so do you kind of see it's yourself pretty amazing do you kind of see yourself ending your career in philippines or next year or kind of what's the plan with that oh well because uh philippines is such a great place it's beautiful here but we're lacking like in times of these like right now with the covid19 we really have no tests no resources not a lot of hospital space so people are predicting that this season might uh, not, you know, pr proceed or resume until the end of this year. So I've definitely opened up some of my options. 
um, I'm not gonna, you know, I can't, I don't live here, live here. My home is in Hawaii. So I gotta, I can't be comfortable. I'm out here like uh, speaking to some agents in, in Japan. And I, I just really like, I'm praying that where the ne- wherever I end up next is, is going to be a good spot for me. For sure. That's awesome. You know, yeah. the, uh, the other thing I think most people, um, there's a lot of people who kind of already followed our uh, YouTube page who know about your singing abilities and your career that way. Um, and that alone, like, it's crazy impressive. The- you all to know because all my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying. Make sure that if you want to pray, my love is not like the mother guys. And you mad at you, and then we laugh and get high. How do you find a balance, or do you use that kind of as a resource? Because last week, I don't know if you're familiar with the Sander brothers, Taylor and Brendan Sander. They were talking to us mm-hmm. about how they need kind of an outside uh, kind of hobby almost to get away from this for. Is that how you view singing? Sure. Yeah, um, well, I've kept music really close to me, and that's really what, me, what helped me stay away from home. That's like the one thing that connects me from home. Besides food, um, music, and my ukulele has got, like, I've taken it everywhere in the world with me. And so I think a lot of Hawaiians that miss home and end up giving in and just heading back to their families, like they need something that can, like a like a, theater, a theoretical umbilical cord. Like you have to have one, something like that. And music has been that for me. And so I play music, I sing every single day. I play my ukulele, I play the guitar and I sing like everybody, like my family is around no matter who is around. So it's really something that I, I is so special to my heart and it will never leave me. And it, we were, oh, I was going to say, we were talking a little bit before the show just about um, music and how it can have an impact on you like that. And it can be a positive influence and stuff. But we were also curious, who are your favorite uh, like local artists like in Hawaii? Does anyone come to mind that's an inspiration for you? Uh, Yeah, of course. I Well, I grew up kind of like, looking up to more reggae artists rather than the local artists. Um, I, I, what, what really makes me happy though, is that I grew up with the now local artists. So Josh Satofi, he is actually my brother-in-law. And really? um, he's a, yeah, he's a huge name Hawaiian singer. Um, yeah, for sure and we then know. Also one of my, one of my closest friends I grew up with is the lead singer of Kolohe Kai. And so, oh, um, yeah, yeah. So now, I get to be inspired by my own friends, like my own circle. And so it's pretty awesome that way. Like that is really I, cool. Yeah. So, so last year, uh, Josh actually came up and performed the national anthem in Hawaii Ponoi at one of my- Oh, that was awesome. And then, and then uh, Chloe Kyle was to come too. But uh, something happened to Roman, they couldn't come. So the, uh, we had so Anuheya right come perform one night. Uh, so that's, it's so cool. I think that's the thing about awesome too. the Hawaiian culture. I, I want to get into that because for us, like, obviously we were born here in mainland. Uh, we all, I went to the university of Hawaii. They still do. And it's such a special place to us. And I want to kind of, like a lot of people that listen in here, they hear us talk about the volleyball program, but the culture itself, you see, like, pe- like you were talking about people leave the Island. Um, and, you know, I talked to my friends like Mike Ma'a, uh, Kapono Fe, those guys. And the phrase mm-hmm. you always hear them say is that you can take, uh, you can take someone from the Island, but you can't take the Island from, uh, the actual individual person. So for that, like, how do you see, how do you kind of take the Aloha spirit almost around the world when you go to all these really cool places when you travel for volleyball? Well, the Aloha spirit is not like an instrument I can just put in my backpack. It's actually instilled in my heart. And so just the way that um, I'm talking to you guys right now, I'm giving you my Aloha. In the morning when I wake up, I I thank God and I'm just like, I'm full of this positivity that we call aloha so i'm just like i i never take anything for granted i'm so thankful for the health of my family and myself and just the people around me so um it's that's also something that's infectious from from what we have and what's now what grew in you guys now that you guys are in our adopted into our culture joe the hawaiians love you <laughs> and you, i mean you're basically hawaiian <laughs> 
So, mm. so, and, and you have that aloha. And before you even move, I met you from through the Ma'as. Yeah. Before that, I was like, wow, this, this Holly boy get aloha too. <laughs> like he, he's cool. And that's why we, and that's why you're so loved in our island. So. For sure. And people don't understand like the aloha kind of spirit in itself and the whole uh, mentality that is in every aspect of the culture, like even driving. That was the one thing I had to get a, uh, adapted to going from California mm-hmm. to Hawaii. Cause you drive and literally I see people pull up to a, they don't have a stop sign. The other, the, uh, the intersection, the other uh, street <laughs> guys, and they'll stop at a not, and they'll let like a whole line of cars. That to me, I'm like literally like, in every aspect of their life. Uh, they kind of bring that aloha spirit, yeah. but I, I feel myself. I, the biggest thing when I feel myself coming back from Hawaii, like the chill from the chill vibes back here is just like, the, the biggest phrase I, I catch myself saying is everyone just chill, like chill out. <laughs> everyone's like, especially in California, everyone's just like, like so tense sometimes, especially in this time. Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh, come on, mom, just chill, chill <laughs> out. Like, what? You tell me to chill. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I just think it's, I just think it's so funny. It's just like, the that's day. so funny. You guys get to experience that. And then I went to the mainland and experienced the other thing. And oh, I'm driving, man. I'm like, bro, what's <laughs> <laughs> At Arizona, what was the, uh, did you have any other Hawaiians on the team with you? Um, I had a someone, uh, someone Fijian girl that, uh, okay. her, she had family in Laie, which is, uh, near the BYU campus in mm-hmm. Honolulu, uh, North on Oahu. Shore. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we, we had each other and then, uh, my last year going out, uh, Sarah Watanabe from Iolani High School, she came out, she walked on to our team. Okay, cool. I have a question. I was wondering, were you ever considering going to Hawaii? Because because Hawaiian culture is so instilled in you, so big, and and anyone that's there. I mean, from someone who kind of uh, left the island to go to the mainland to go play, what what goes? Or did there? you have the option to or, too? Yeah, exactly. Did you, have, did you have the option to go to Hawaii? Uh, you know what? I I'm very. This always has been like a something, a question that always pops up. Kale, why didn't you stay and play for Hawaii? For my personally. Um, I have always, always wanted to live in the mainland just because I'm from one of the smallest towns in, on Oahu. Um, my, my city is called, my hometown is called Kahalu'u. It's right in between Kaneohe and then on your way out to the North Shore. So um, I've always like, I'm, I'm just super like, I can't stay still. Um, I, I want my dad always, dad, we went home this way last time. Can we go around? Like, I would always want to see a different scene, a different, I wanted to be in a different setting. I would move my room around all the time because I'm like so tired of the, the same old. And so when it was time for me to get recruited, my grandpa got sick and I totally thought about only playing for Hawaii because it's such a dream. Like any Hawaii kid's dream is to represent Hawaii. And yeah, I, I don't need to go to the mainland. Like I'll, I'll get that right here. But when I got recruited uh, to go, I had my top teams were never Hawaii because all of the schools that were offering me seemed seemed a lot more compelling. And I just, I used to play club for the UH club called Imi Ike. And co- at the time, Coach Scott Wong and Coach Carey and Coach Dave would always sit me down in the office and say, Kale. Like, we have a spot for you, but, like, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to tell us what number it is on your hand so that we can, you know, narrow things down. And I was just not ready for that. Like, I could not imagine myself staying here in Hawaii. And then, you know, I love my family more than anything, but they would love it if I was the first of my generation, of my uh, family to go into the main, to go to the mainland, experience that and stuff. So it was just it wasn't hard for me at the time it, the decision was like okay right on. i want to i want to go somewhere cold so i don't know joe if you guys know that i went to the university of minnesota first so you you went straight to university of minnesota from here yeah so you, cool. so did you who was the class you went into there with hannah tap page tap wow. sarah wilhite those are my that's classes. a big class that was a big class yeah. what Gee, mm-hmm. all four of you wow how come you transferred Oh man, I never, I never. Too cold? Co- 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I loved uh, if there was a city in the in in the mainland that I could ever see myself living, it'd be Minnesota. Yeah, I love it so much there. But um, I never, and I don't know uh, who is watching the, is going to be watching this podcast. But man, so many I people, about, <laughs> at least a million. Did I learned about politics when I went there. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. crazy. I barely even played volleyball. Like it was more than just you know going to a top program like that and then expecting hard work to just get you to like on the court or something no way oh for sure politics play a huge we've talked about that a couple times like having to deal with certain situations yeah i i can absolutely understand that and especially with a program like minnesota like in the pro uh, in the athletic department there but it happens everywhere yeah it happens everywhere but kind of the best of it though yeah but tying it back to Hawaii here a little bit, we get a lot of people saying like they want to come to Hawaii. They DM us all the time. Like we're huge fans. We want to come see a game in Hawaii just because it's the atmosphere there is so cool right now. Um, for you, kind of back to the culture, what is your uh, kind of favorite food when you're back home in Hawaii? Where do you like going to eat usually? Just so the listeners who come and visit Hawaii, they know where to go. Well, for me, I'm, I'm a foodie. Like I come from my, my dad, my grandfather, my grandma were farmers. And so I go straight home and my family cooks crazy. So of course that's my first stop. But my second one would probably be Ono Seafood on Kapu. Oh, I'm classic. sure you guys know about that. Classic. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite poke. And then the next would be Maruju Market. Right, on, uh, right across from Pearl Ridge, they have the best squid luau. And Kalua pig. I think I think the food in Hawaii, for those who travel and don't know much about, it, is like the most underrated thing. Because the food there is just amazing. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. I I go everywhere. I'm just like such a huge fan. That's the biggest thing. Like when you leave, you miss. Um, there's like the food is so awesome. It's chicken special. katsu just regularly available. <laughs> just wherever you want to go. Just poke so at the good. grocery store, like in Chicago. Yes. Yeah. The idea of that I, I wish. Be, yeah. Hawaii's got to be like the only place, like the only place uh, in the nation where for, so Arizona, I'm sure in packed full of school, you guys had your fuel stations where you got smoothies or whatnot or snacks in the day. Mm -hmm. For us, Hawaii, our snack station consists of tropical fruit and pog. That's our load up station. That's our load up pog for practice. I went down to the, I down like, of course, like, like we didn't have if we didn't have water anywhere, I'd be like chugging pog. It was in passion, <laughs> after our workouts, it's passion, uh, passion fruit, wait, passion orange, orange juice, and like guava. Uh, guava, right? Yeah, like all three. Yeah, this is a classic. <laughs> That's uh, classic. So, <laughs> so we get enough of those. And after our fun fact, after our workout, there's a uh, right outside, right in between our practice facility and right in between our uh, weight room. There is coconut trees. Mm-hmm. So after <laughs> you can see the Hawaii men's marble team shaking or taking the tree, <laughs> like making holes and just like <laughs> just like taking them. And we used to store coconuts in our locker room. <laughs> and we just like ah and like bathe ourselves and like drink. Okay. Imagine that. That's something like no other team in, in this whole country can ever say that they do that. <laughs> oh, absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely Break not. Break coconuts in the shower. <laughs> that's amazing i love it so so to kind of to kind of end with it we want to end with something spectacular something a learning experience for the viewers um so as a local from hawaii you are familiar with pigeon okay can you give us mm-hmm. kind of a brief description because you I, I i try and describe it you could probably give a better description of what pigeon actually is for our non-local viewers yeah <laughs> yeah well um pigeon is actually just uh, another phrase for broken english and it's something that the immigrants, like uh, we had a bunch of uh, people from different countries around, s- surrounding the Pacific Ring, uh, come to Hawaii and work on the plantations, the sugar mill, the pineapple fields. Um, and so a lot of the people that came, China, uh, we had Mexico, we had uh, Japan and Koreans, Portuguese, um, everyone came to Hawaii and they tried, they had to work together. But since they didn't have uh, the education to communicate, they, nobody was taught anything, this language, pigeon, started to form amongst those workers in the plantation fields. And that what, that's what became pigeon. So mostly you're going to hear bits and pieces of Hawaiian words, which is called olelo o Hawaii, the language of Hawaii. And then you're going to hear a little bit of Japanese and Chinese, Portuguese, 
So it sounds like the most uneducated <laughs> language that you can hear, but the story behind it is so fascinating. Yeah, I, th I think, and Hawaii, I, I believe it's a, it's a class at Hawaii, like, right, Max? Is it, can, can, it's, a, it's a language. Yeah, there are actually, are, yeah the yeah. UH linguistics department actually offers a, a degree, and the, 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 I think it says Hawaiian Creole English, but that's the Jeez, pigeon that we're talking crazy. about right now. Pretty cool. So, yeah. so, so we're going to have Max over here. We wrote down five or six pigeon uh, slang words for, for the viewers, for, phrases. For, phrases for you, and, and we okay. want you to give us the definition and use it in a sentence or like a situation. So Max is going to read them to you. And then you're yeah. following here. All right, Max, got, all yours, buddy. We got five here, and you can educate the viewers on each one. <laughs> First one we have okay. is chicken skin. You actually used it earlier in the broadcast that we have. Yeah. Okay, chicken skin is goosebumps. Translates yep. to goosebumps. Exactly. And in a sentence, oh, bro, her voice so good, I get chicken skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of sentence we're looking for. Uh, next one, uh, Bombay. Used okay. in a sentence. But Bombay uh, translates to maybe later. So, uh, hey, Holly boy, Bombay show you. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Two for two. On it. Okay. Uh, next one is choke. Okay, choke means a lot. <laughs> uh, and in a sentence, Oh, the first time I went to a new H men's volleyball game I had choked people down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, next one we got is all boss. Uh, <laughs> all boss translates to uh, drunk or intoxicated. Yep. Or you're um you got bus up, like you got um beat up or you hurt yourself somehow. But in a sentence, <laughs> I don't even, I never use this, but in a sentence, um, hold out a day, my freaking friend came to my house, all bust, asking me to like, take one shower. Exactly, exactly. Okay, and our final one is uh, mops. Mops, okay, mops is like good food. Um, and so in good food or just like a bunch of food. And so, hey, boys, come to auntie's house. We always get the mops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. That, Actually, was, that was beyond all right. That was awesome. That, that, was, was, that, was, that was the best. We do these sort of games like every single show with guests. And sometimes they give answers that are kind of like, but that was by far our favorite excellent. one we've done yet. That was excellent. So, Yay. <laughs> thank you, Tillet. And, and, you know, again, before we kind of sign off here, we uh, – you're like I. We didn't go th through it a whole lot, but your musical career. Like, are you planning on uh, starting like serious career when you're done with volleyball, kind of fully committing your time to your musical career? I definitely think I'm gonna try and squeeze through that window. Um, you know, volley volleyball is definitely my vehicle that's taking me around and letting me experience so many cultures and uh, countries. But, but I, I feel music has always been my passion. So I would not be able to sleep at night if I completely yeah. like uh, X that out of my, of my list of things to do in this life. So yeah, Joe, I'll let you know. For <laughs> sure. And, and before I let Gage sign us off here, I got to tell you, my favorite video, we search your name in a YouTube bar. My favorite video is by far you and Roman just sitting at Sandy's just jamming. I'm like, together, baby, there ain't nothing we won't do. Cause if I got you. This is the sickest video ever. <laughs> it, was, it was like 10 yeah. years ago. Some of those videos on your YouTube channel are long ago. But anyone listening, yeah. go check out Lay Mouse, Spotify, uh, Happy Sad, her most popular song on there, yeah? And YouTube Freaking and Instagram. Dope. You need to do you need to do a collab with Ma'a, with Micah Ma'a, or even like Jenna Gabriel. I think, I don't know if you know who she is. She's I know like, both. Of, yeah, I know Jenna. She went, she goes to Texas, huh? But you and Ma'a, that'd be a, that'd be a dope. One day, maybe. I would love One that. Day. <laughs> that guy is so talented. Kalei, you have been an amazing guest. I, I've learned, and hopefully everyone watching, all, like I said, millions and millions of watching, uh, have <laughs> learned a lot of pigeon, a lot about the Hawaiian culture, and, and hopefully a lot about yourself. And, and hopefully the family's safe. Hopefully you're safe. And, and we wish you nothing but the best. So, uh, Kalei, thank you so much for joining us. On Mahalo. System. Thank you. Mahalos. Mahalo. Mahalo nui, guys. Now wow, Madison. yeah, that was really good. Yeah, I love that. <laughs>
What were you saying, Gage? Sorry. <laughs> you <laughs> oh, that Max, that was actually kind of legendary. But that is what you call a local right now. That is that is a local. Dude, and right it, now. what I what I wanted when I asked Calais to come on this week, what I wanted to happen was for you guys, all the listeners, because we we have a good amount listening from Hawaii, but we also have so many from different parts of the world and different parts of the U.S. I wanted them to kind of learn like about the Hawaiian culture because we talk about the program at UH, but to me, like the entire experience of my four years there playing, and when I was younger, I lived there for two years, that entire experience there on the island was, was so cool, and that place is so special to me as I know it is to you guys, and I want you guys to kind of see a little bit. Just I hope you guys learn. I hope really you guys learned a little bit from her because she – She's someone who she's so talented in so many different ways. And she knows, obviously she knows a lot about her culture. You know, her family's from Hawaii. Um, and that was so cool to me. That was like for sure. Yeah, one of my sweet. favorite shows we've shot yet. That was so sweet. And I feel like just listening to the way that she articulated herself, I think that she's a, like a really good example of how a lot of people from, from Hawaii, like they just act as a representative. Yeah of the state you know what i mean wherever they go and they just i don't know it's just clearly a something that they take a lot of pride in yeah for sure and, and you'd be like okay maybe we just picked a good guest and she was a phenomenal guest don't get me wrong but yeah. if you ask most hawaiian people about their heritage and culture they'll know it yeah. like they'll, they'll all know it like yeah. if you ask, i bet if you go and ask them like mainlanders about the history of america including myself we might yeah. actually do that next if you guys want to do that have us a quiz about america we wouldn't hey, know i'll do i'll do good I'll for some, max would know but myself and, and, and most of america probably wouldn't know jack squat about i mean anything really how many stars on american flag shit we got 13 colonies so 13 minus 50 13 minus 50 got down 47 <laughs> i mean but I, and, I, and it speaks to the, to the level of just like the, the raising and the heritage of that place. It just, I mean, you see it on TV, but it's being there is a whole other thing. The Aloha, so maybe he'll make it, oh, Aloha, Shaka, Shaka. But that stuff, like, it's, it's super part of like, it. It's so cool, though. Like, once you live in the culture and you get to experience that all, it's the coolest thing ever. And for anybody who hasn't gotten a chance to get over to somewhere on the islands and experience, and not just experience kind of the touristy parts, but really get to experience the culture and the, the traditional foods and see the, not, not just, you know, like Waikiki and stuff like, like get around and see uh, the, what makes Hawaii so special. I think it, I really recommend that you get over there. And I'm still fired up from this show. It, like that was, awesome. that was, Wait, can I say one more thing? Just unrelated. This is just out of nowhere. Not related, really sort of related to what we're That's talking we roll, about. Baby. You guys were talking about like knowing U S history and stuff that happened in the U S. Okay. Well, I've been on a Western movie binge lately with Cowboys and stuff. Just watched The Revenant, and I want to throw oh, a huge God. shout out to The Revenant on this. It's a good movie. I've DiCaprio's seen it. DiCaprio's first Oscar. If you watch Only it, Oscar. let me know what you think. Dude, oh, yeah. True. Unbelievable. Go pirate it. Find it. <laughs> find it any way you can. I don't think it's on any streaming service. Buy it. Anything you can get. It's phenomenal. Let us know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, guys, actually, I don't do this enough. Joe. Thanks for being on the show, man. Oh, that's well, nice. You. Max, come here, man. Give that's, us, give us come here. And also, you, and also to all our Ohana that's been listening, all you guys thank who are you. a part of us now, a part of this show, and have been tuning in. Prestige we can't worldwide. thank you guys enough. Please send you, like we said from, the, uh, from earlier on, we have people sending in stuff to us, stories, and just kind of telling us about the show, their feedback. Please, out of system, 808 at gmail.com or any of our IGs. Send it over. We'd love to talk about it on the show. Uh, I, I'm still so fired up for this show. So far, I feel like I could run through a wall. Guys, this has been another episode of Out, Out of System Show.